I'm tough in my demands because I think the game is tough. I think if you're tough on them, they'll stand up to mental pressure that comes on in the grand final. We're not from a soft, bloody, cushy life. Final of 1975, North Melbourne versus Hawthorne. If you win this, you'll be remembered forever. The hairs on the back are going up. Still feel like I'd race out of the room now. It'll be the danger player, Sam. Slamming Sam Kekovic. It was a nightmare and it will never go away. I hate Hawthorne, but I totally admire them. Well, how can you beat them in the grand final? You haven't beaten them all year. We were confident about winning this game. We had no reason not to be. It was just a very emotional time, I can tell you. Take the risk. If you make the mistake and if you do it that doesn't come off, do it again. Do it again and keep doing it. That way, we'll either get beaten by 20 goals or we'll win. Three years ago, they were nothing. Barassi has done a marvellous job to get him in this position. We come from bottom to sixth, and we played off in, in a grand final and thrashed by Richmond. We just put on a very ordinary performance. And I can remember the night we met at the social club. While somewhat depressed, looking forward to having quite a convivial evening over the drip tray. No one likes losing, but we, we like to drink. So it's sad, you know, we're entitled to have a drink. But when he's on his throne, he's on his throne. Everybody takes notice when Ron's not happy. And he wasn't happy. A tirade of invective was tipped over us. And I, and I mean unbridled abuse. You can't be happy just to get to a grand final. It's, uh, the idea is to win the grand final. It's the most vilifying, most ferocious verbal attack that I think I'd ever experienced didn't go down very well with a lot of people, and a lot of people were really upset about that. What he said might have upset a few of the people, but that was Barassi. We shouldn't be satisfied with ourselves. I'm very annoyed to see some of you still laughing. Barassi was determined after that grand final and that night when he really got into us that it wasn't going to happen again the next year. Footballers today need a great deal more than just talent. The factors which are necessary for success, strength, suppleness, stamina, speed, and skill. As a footballer in those days, it was a fantastic period. It was highly competitive, it was tribal. We all worked, we had to work. We didn't have any computers, we didn't have any mobile phones. You had your job and uh, the football was very serious. You always realised that it, it wasn't your main job. Had a beautiful home out in Surrey Hills. Bought it for $32,000, would you believe, in the, those times. The hair was a little bit longer. We all had a lot more hair in those days, and the, the sideies. Life generally, I don't think, was much different than it is now. You had as much fun as you could. You have a few drinks on Saturday night. Sunday night. <laughs> Monday night. Oh, wow, wait. That was jolly good fun, that was, I'll tell you. You all tore around like racing greyhounds, didn't you? We'll be finding out in just a couple of gifs who will be competing for that superstar grand prize of a magnificent General Electric 19-inch portable TV. With colour TV sets due on the market in August, the local industry has been gearing up for the new product. Colour TV, what a huge thing. I actually won a colour television over in Adelaide and it was fantastic. I thought, how are we going to get a TV? But we got one through that way. The very last word in colour television. It enables you to change channels at the touch of a button. And you don't even have to leave your armchair. It was a great era, you know, 75, but it was all about football for me then. It's been a great week in Melbourne. The people of Melbourne have been talking nothing else but the grand final. Uh, there's not much difference between these two teams, but the only reason I've gone for Hawthorne, they've beaten them three times for the year. I really went to the game that day expecting we'd come off with a, with a premiership medal. Well, we should win this, and we should win it easily. They had the wood on us during the year, because we never beat them all year. Well, how can you beat them in the grand final? You haven't beaten them all year. 
I, I hate Hawthorne, but I totally admire them. They had their own little uh, culture, their own way they went about things, and you really admire that. I was quite confident that one, that they were beatable, and two, that we could be good enough to beat them. It, it can't be in fear of them. It was a very, very heavy week for us, as they say, because we had um, we had a very traumatic experience with Peter Crimmins, who'd struggled all the year to be in the team. It was mid-season, he was diagnosed with testicular cancer and was operated on, and he slowly sort of came, got better and started to train. He was desperate to get a game, and he trained so hard to get there, and he was still battling cancer at the time. And unfortunately, the match committee said no. The responsibility for Peter being in the side or out of the side was mine. Crimo was very disappointed and upset about the whole decision. Didn't go to the game in 75, didn't go. He was just so disappointed. Mm, wasn't right, didn't feel right. We weren't, we weren't on, it was flat when it shouldn't have been. I personally felt gutted. I remember training with him on Thursday and until I got to the game on Saturday, I had no idea that he wasn't going to be part of our side. And um, to be told that prior to running out, it left a lot of us flat. If you're feeling tired, just think of Crimmins. He's home, he's not here. He brought his insides up this morning, he's vomiting. He's not here. You weren't at the match committee on Thursday night, as I was, when we had a big argument as to whether he ought to be in or out. And everybody spoke his mind and he finished up out. He's not happy, he wasn't happy about it. Who would be? Rassi has said, they're going to win this game, wet or dry, and the crowd will be hollering for them. Everything will be running for North Melbourne. Football is a game that you blokes took on under the one contract. You put your eye on the ball and you go at it with everything you've got and more. And you've got to do this or you're not fit to be wearing the Guernsey. All of your families are here watching the game. Just think of them sitting up there and they've got to hear people standing around saying so-and-so squibbed it. Now don't have that said about you. Better be carted off than have anybody say so-and-so squibbed it. Think of the humiliation of the people who are watching it. The name of Hawthorne has got to be respected by North Melbourne and the name of Matthews has got to be respected by North Melbourne just as the name of Trott and the name of Ablett and Martello and Henry, they've got to know after today. You've got to show them. Can we say with a certain amount of certainty that Doug Wade will be in and Barry Goodingham will be in? Uh, Who in their wildest dreams would have think that Doug Wade would have been dropped on the eve of the grand final? But he was. I'd heard that I wasn't in the team. That was my whole reason to go to North. I wanted to play in their first ever grand final. Back in the match committee room, there's a knock on the door and in comes Doug Wade. Put my case that, you know, I wouldn't let them down. Brassie said, look, uh, we'll let you know. Uh, I mean, it, it sounds very am amateurish today. Uh, and uh, to think that a player could talk his way back into a side, but Doug did, Doug did. He said, we've decided to put you in the team, but under my conditions, I said, well, what, what's that? He said, I don't want you to go for one mark during the match. You've got to stay down. Don't go for a mark. I said, why is this? He said, well, you just leave it to me. The dynamic Ron Barassi, who's lifted North Melbourne from obscurity. I suppose we could term him as Mr. Football. guys out of 20 were here four years ago when you were just a bum side. Those horrible years at North Melbourne, they'll fade very, very quickly if we can get a flag. Since our inception in 1925, for a 50-year period, we'd been bereft of any success. And I remember walking into the North Melbourne Social Club and emblazoned on the wall the first 20 players that bring home North Melbourne's first ever premiership will gain football immortality. I thought, what the heck does this mean? You know, they've had obviously a spare space, couldn't afford the artwork, so they've put up some scriptures. They were desperate to win it. And you can understand that after 50 years of not, being, uh, not winning a premiership. And we knew that. We knew that. Ron Barassi in the North Melbourne dressing room. Well, you can imagine. It was like Vesuvius going off. 
I spoke on Thursday night about that Herald poster. I'll tell you what happens to that poster. There's 25,000 each printed. The both sheets were done to get the right one out on time, not to be caught by an underdog team winning. As soon as I heard that, I thought, hmm, hmm. As soon as that siren goes, a truck with the 25,000 of the losing side goes to the shredder. There's the Herald poster we want, and this is what we don't want to happen to us. Do you want to be the one to be tore, tore up? Now, uh, that's very simple. No, we don't. All our plans are laid. All it needs now is your minds and your hearts on the job. And you will bloody come in here so happy. And you'll be bloody worthy winners because you've given me all the support that you possibly can. All that remains is for you to get out there and give your teammates all the support you can. And let's go! Come on! He willed us that this was our day. If you win this, you'll be remembered forever. It'll be Big Mick Nolan and Don Scott to go for the knockout. Face him, Don. Face him. Look him in the eye and face him. Welcome to the grand final of 1975. Nolan comes in there. Scott gets up on him. Pierce Burns up north. He's grabbed high. Oh, and look at this. A 15-metre penalty against Calvin Matthews. A kick from Burns going right up into the goal square. Montfrey back in back. I thought it was fairly good because it was about 67 and a half yards, which is a fair weight. Oh, he let everyone know too. <laughs> he had a big mouth too. He'd let you know, come right up to your face. So You had to let them know that you're up and about. Uh, they might have think they could have stood over with their toughness and their culture. And there we see a shot by Martella. Not a good one, but it's a move. Oh, and it's oh, Rowling's got the ball. Count Miss Rollins, he's got those bright yellow shoes on. We had enormous respect for each other. It was almost a, like the Mexican standoff. Scott and uh, Gegovic having a great battle there. Skyler, he's tipped out. And a free kick. Oh, Gegovic. Well, there's big Don Scott. You wouldn't think he was a fashion designer. It certainly wasn't fashionable. It was a kick by Sam. Each and every one of us were very mindful that whoever starts it is going to end up on the wrong side of the ledger. There's a go now for Bly, the pass. That's OK, and Burns has got the mark. He's playing on, he fires. I played on Croswell and gave me an absolute bath. Came back, Tiger's on fire and all this sort of stuff. Knocked away again by Hendry. Going through as uh, Croswell playing the game of his life down there. Brent Croswell, he was just on fire. Going after Scott, he's got a chance. But he's up and he'll get a free kick, I'd say. Oh, unbelievable. The kick by Scott. Taking his time, realising the importance of each kick for goal today. Oh, oh it's it. Got in by the skin of its teeth, but it's a goal. Right, it's up north, going for a bit of a run, but he's running into the pocket. He straightens up now, he kicks it through, I reckon. It's through by Wade. Grabbed, oh, he's tipped up by Moore, but he gets the kick back. Oh, 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 nice, what was really on, on song. He stood out, he was a, had a great leap. I thought his effort was very good for Hawthorne. Nolan tries a short one over here towards Schimmelbush, he's under the hammer. Give us a go. Bloody crowd yelling, he's jumping a mile. Well, it was uh, Schimmelbush and not me in any case. Martello comes in now. He's surrounded as the siren goes, ending the first quarter of the 1975 Grand Final. The scoreboard at quarter time reads Hawthorne 2-2-14, North Melbourne 4-2-26. They should have been further in front. They had all the play. They had more style to their play and direction, where we tend to just get it and bomb it in. And I think it was just the fact that we're under pressure from north. We've got to do better, a lot better. They've dogged it here, in front of me here. After all I've said, blokes not willing to put their bodies in. You've got to have a go. If you don't have a go, you're coming off the ground. I'll finish with 15 men, but we'll have blokes who are having a go. They're beating us in the air, they're killing us. So knock it towards the goals, you've got it clear. They got the score on the board, we're down. It's a disgraceful quarter and it's no good going on like that. 
Two marvellous coaches, Louis Unley, Brass and Kanga. Well, two of the biggest personalities that we've ever had in football. Boys, all in all, it's pretty good. We've got more possessions than them. We deserve our lead, which is nearly double their bloody score. And I want another two-goal lead for this bloody quarter. Fellas, that's one good quarter, only three to go. Don't forget a blitz, a blitz bloody creek from this first 15 minutes of this quarter. You ready to go again? Right now, come on! It's all right for Brightus. He's given a hand pass back to Shimabush, a snap for goal. Adam Beauty. Jump out then, Cook, but it's called play on. In comes Martello, crashes his way through, kicks across the face of goals. They're after it there. Trot manoeuvres his way around, he steadies, he shoots and he's put it through. Stewie Trot. Uh, there's some pretty tense faces, Luke. I don't know whether the hypnotist has got to them. Yes, we use this chap to put people under hypnosis. As I count backwards from 20, you begin to awaken. When I reach one and snap my fingers, you come wide awake and you feel really well, completely energised. Guy Grant's always been a fitness nut, so it follows Grant's got an affinity with sportsmen. He used to lay us down on the floor and sort of put us to sleep to shit. And, just, and I remember being with Barry Cable, laying back, and we had to be quiet, and I whispered to Barry, I said, do you think this does any good? And he said, not if you can't play footy. He said, <laughs> he said hypnotism. <laughs> Look, don't worry, fellas, just just do it, and I'll come out at quarter time and turn you all and point you the other way, and then you can go from there. <laughs> And I was a bit of a sceptic. I said, what's this, you know, hypnosis? I said, I don't think that works. Do you think your work with North Melbourne is going to make them a better side? Yes. He went through this process, put me to sleep. And I said, I don't think I'm going to work. I might be one of those one percenters that, you know, are really a thorn in the backside of your particular mode of employ. Three, two, one. Anyhow, he woke me up halfway through and I had a needle right through my arm. It went through there and out the other side. The need, and I hadn't felt a thing. So then I was convinced. I think you and I might go to this hypnotist that North's been using, Louis. The way Kikovic swooped on that ball will give a clear indication that he's right on the ball, slamming Sammy. To me, I was always interested in looking at anything that was new, see if it was possible to be used or how good it was going to be. Maybe if Ron Barassi decides that Hypnotherapy isn't the answer to a coach's prayers. We might find one word added to this sign. Hypnotists are not allowed to be taken into the ground. It's swinging around. It could drop short. It does. Up they go. Wait, takes it. Wait, took it from behind and he's popped it through. Got Wade's first goal. I was tempted to go for the mark. And I thought, no, I've got to stay down. And it just came straight into my hands and I entered an open goal and kicked the goal. Here we see now, going after Sam Kikovic. He quite can't make up his mind what to do. with over to Wade again. The buck is blind. Here's the go for Wade. He fires. Another goal to North Melbourne. It was just fantastic. You'd say, yeah, I've done it again. <laughs> Rollins, a little rover, taking a run on that southern side of the ground. Eventually gets his kick in towards the goal square. Oh, a tablet. Couldn't see him missing this one. It's on its way. Burns under pressure, a left foot snap by Burns, he's popped it through. Bloody hell, that was too good for us there, weren't they? Hawthorne, some of their players nonplussed. Nonplussed, good expression, yes, yes. We well, did look a bit nonplussed. Towards Burns, Burns runs around, he straightens up, he shoots. It's another one. Lou, they've got three goals in three and a half minutes, North. He screws it around to the face of goals. Martello! Kicking to the Western goal, it's on its way. There's another one to Hawthorne. They're still in business, believe me. It's the run on. Gully's put uh, Greg under pressure now. Trot intercepts it. Intercepts the ball, fires for the goal, but he's off target. And I think he's put it out of bounds on the full. Yes, out of bounds on the full. And the siren goes for half time. I didn't think it had gone for us, but we were really in a lot of trouble. The Hawthorne coach, John Kennedy, not looking particularly happy. There was always silence in the dressing room. He made sure 
Everyone had eye contact with him. You don't look around when John's delivering messages. There's only one thing in football, that's to get in and fight for the ball. Fight for the ball! We're so far into the mess that we have to be desperate to get out of it. If it goes wrong, it goes wrong. At least you're doing what I ask, and at least I'm responsible. But I'm not responsible for the gutless, witless display that's going on out there. And at least do something! Do! Don't think, Mick! Don't hope! Do! At least you can come off and say, I did this! Or I shivered it! Or I played on! At least I did something for the sake of the side. Do! Act! Don't think, act! Eye on the ball! I'm game enough to tell you to do it. Are you game enough to back me up? Started to give me a bit goosey again. The hairs on my back are going up and I still feel like a race out of the room now. North Melbourne yet to appear. No doubt Ron Brassie has had a lot to say to his team. When you 